Hello and welcome to this episode. In this video, I'm going to show you how to connect to the Shepherd folder fact saves table, create date dimension table from the fact table, and write power code M code to create fiscal years such as 2023 to 2024, 2024 to 2025, and so on using the fabric data flow gen 2. Afterwards, we're going to transform the data folder by merging the F sales by date date and group total sales by fiscal year without writing a single DAX formula. Without much talking, let's get started. I'm going to come to this F sales nail workbook in the SharePoint folder. I'm going to show you the content. So we have this other ID, the other date to the total cost. So this is going to be our fact table. So I'm going to go ahead and create our data flow gen tool and then connect to this data. So come back here and then I want to click in this data flow gen tool nail and I want to choose the data flow gen tool type. And I'm going to come to the SharePoint folder and copy the site URL. Select to this point. Control C to copy the URL, come back to data flow, and then we'll point to the SharePoint folder. So click on that and control V in the site URL. Scroll to the left and delete some parts of the site URL. So I'm going to select from this point and to this colon, delete, and of course this is connected to my entry ID. So we don't need to do anything for the connection credentials. Click on next. And we have the data in the Power Query Online, the data flow gen So we want to filter the F sales nail workbook. So I'm going to come to the name column. I'm going to click on the filter and I'll filter the text that contains F sales. And as I'm done, click OK. And it's going to be filtered down to the F sales nail dot XL XX. And there we go. I'm going to right click on content and remove the property columns. Now, in this, the data is stored as a binary in an Excel workbook. So to extract the property columns of the binary, I'm going to come to the Add Column tab. I'm going to add a new custom column. I'm going to go with this default name, doesn't matter, and use the Excel dot workbook M function, the macho function, to extract the content of the binary. I'm going to double click on the content that is holding the binary Excel file. I'm going to click OK. OK, so we have the table now i can see we have the excel.workbook okay i'm going to click on this expandable icon and i want to filter the name and the data so name and data and then click okay and then we can focus on the f sales worksheet within the workbook so i can see we have this f sales one i can click on this open space to see the preview of the data we have the other id the other date delivery date and so on so i'm going to click on this name filter and i can deselect everything and i can scroll down and choose the f sales one and then click ok so this is going to be filtered down to that single workbook worksheet rather hold down the shift key and click on the content column i can delete by right click and then remove the columns and then we have the data so i can click on this expandable icon to unwrap all the columns within the data worksheet so click ok and there we go. So we've unwrapped all the columns in the F sales worksheets. Now, with the column selected, I can use the Power Query automatic detect data type to fix all of these ABC123 no or general data types. So I'm going to come to the Home tab, I'm sorry, in the Transform tab, and then under the Any column, click on the Detect Data Type. And it's going to be fixed for me without having to do that individually, which is really important. That is sorted. I'm going to come to this query. I'm going to right click and then create a duplicate because we're going to create a dim date dimension table in a moment. So I'm going to come back to this and call this one F sales. It's going to be a fact table. And this is going to be the dim date dimension table. And then click enter. And then for the dim date, we're going to extract all the unique order date records and then we're going to perform the fiscal year. So I'm going to come here to the order date column, right click and then remove all the columns. And then we're going to get rid of the duplicate again, right click and then remove duplicates. And then we're going to sort from ascending order or by ascending order. Click on this and then sort ascending. So the first transaction occurred on the 1st of January 2017. That is sorted. So I want to go ahead and go to the core part of this video, which is the fiscal year. So I'm going to come to the add column tab. I'm going to insert a new custom column. I'm going to call this one fiscal year. Now, the amazing part of this Power Query Online is that we can easily define the data type without having to do it later. So I'm going to use the text data type. 
it's going to be converted as a text. So let me just make this to be fiscal year. Okay. So for this, I'm going to use the let function, which allows us to define the variable and then I'm going to pass in the variable in the end operator later. So for the first variable we want to define, we want to call this one CY. This simply means the current year. Now for the current year based on this order, they want to extract the year. So I'm going to use the date dot year function and open the brackets. This is the same thing as the year function Excel. So I'm going to double click on the order date column and this is going to extract the year for me comma and then press enter we also need another variable called the py as previous year so this is going to be cy what's this cy is delivering and this is going to be minus one and press enter and then we need the ny for the next year this is going to be equal to cy plus one and then put in a comma so after we've defined this three variable we're going to go ahead and convert what the cy py and ny is delivering from date to text and this is going to allow us to perform some concatenation within the if function later on so i'm going to call this one cy formatting and it's going to equal to text dot from function and then i'm going to open the bracket and i'm going to pass in this cy and then put in a comma and then i'm going to do the same thing for the py py formatting this is going to equal to text dot from m function this is going to be py as the value Put in the comma, press enter, and then we need the ny. This is going to be ny formatting, and this is going to equal to text dot from function open the bracket. I'm going to pass in the ny and then put in the comma. We also want to extract the month number. So to do that, I'm going to call another variable named month number, and this is going to equal to the date dot month. This is the same thing as the month function in Excel. So the month and I'm going to open the bracket and I'm going to grab that from the other date and I'm going to press enter and then I'm going to introduce the in and after the in I want to use the a function so I want to check if this month number is greater than or equal to 4 because our fiscal year starts from the April of the current year ending in the next year so if the month number is greater than or equal to 4 then I want to take the CY formatting and I'm going to apply a concatenation so ampersand inside the single code I want to use the iPhone and then under ampersand let me just make it to be easier to read let me just put in some space and then I want to grab the next year uh, this is going to be NY so NY formatting and press enter else if the month number is not greater than or equal to four then i want to take the py that is the previous formatting again we need to concat the ampersand so inside single quote we need the iphone and then another iphone and then we want to grab the cy formatting cy formatting okay so this is all we need to do and they can go through the code again if you don't understand again we have the let function and then we have the CY that's delivering the year part of this order date. And then we have the PY, which is going to be CY minus one. And then we have the new year or the next year, which is the CY plus one. And then we have the CY format, which is actually converting what this CY is delivering to text. So we have the text from here. And then we have the PY formatting, converting the PY to text and so on. And then we use the month number variable and then we use the date dot month function to extract the month number 1 to 12 representing January to December and then in the end we use the if function and we pass in the month number we check if this is greater than or equal to 4 if that is true then give me the CY formatting with the concatenation of the NY formatting if not true then return the PY formatting with the concatenation of the CY formatting so click OK and let's see the results Oh, brilliant. This worked fine. So we have the 2016 to 2017. So when you scroll down, we're going to see 2017 to 2018. Brilliant. And then we scroll down further, we're going to see the 2018 to 2019 and so on and so forth. So this is actually working fine. So we want to go ahead and perform our calculation. Now, don't forget, we have two tables. We have the DIN date and then the F sales. And I want to focus on calculating the total sales in this F sales table by the fiscal year now how do we do it it's so easy i'm going to come here now our focus is not to write any dax i'm going to show you how to do all of this in power query because i love the power query so i'm going to grab this f sales table and i'm going to come to the home tab in home tab we have the combined group click on this and i want to use the match now i can match by using the existing or the currently selected table we can also match as name but i'm going to stick with this 
um, F cells. So click on the match queries. Now the match queries allows me to pick the column from the F cells table and then connect to the right table to match. So we have the other date selected here, which is really important. And I want to take the table from the right. This is going to be the theme date. And I want to connect to the other date because this is actually connecting. This is the menu side and these are the unique. So this is the foreign keys and these are what's called the primary keys in this case. So I'm just going to use the inner join. So this is fine. And then we have the selection matches 10,000 to 10,000 rows from the first table, which is cool. Click OK. And then we're going to have a new column in the F cells table here. So we have the dim date. I can click on this expanded icon to unwrap the two columns. So in this case, we're going to, since we're going to group by the fiscal year, not the other date, I'm going to uncheck the other date and then click OK. And we're going to have the 2020, 2014 to 2015 and so on and so forth. So this is working absolutely awesome. OK, so we can go ahead and perform our aggregation. So what is lovely so i can come here within the same home tab i can use the group by here i can even come to the transform tab and use the group by here. it doesn't matter it's still the same so we want to group by the fiscal year now because this is the correctly selected column it is populated automatically which is really cool for me i'm going to call this one total sales and then i'm going to use the sum operation and this is going to be my numeric column the total sales oops the total sales column okay so We'll just go ahead and click OK. And there we go. This is the solution. So we have the total sales by the fiscal year, which is super cool. I can come here and sort this ascending order. And then we're going to have the 2016, 2017, and this gives this value. I can change this to a currency data type to make it easier to read. And we have the 2017 to 2018, and then we have the total sales, we have the 2018 to 2019, and so on and so forth. So this is how we can write the M code to create the fiscal year in the Power Query and then group by the total sales. I trust you enjoyed this video. If you do, like, share, comment, and follow me for more videos because the best is yet to come. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.